Thank you everyone for deciding to invest your time in this session on community and networking as part of Viatech's Call for Talent initiative. My name is Rob Bennett and I'm the moderator for this session. I'm a recovering entrepreneur who started as a software developer and for the last 10 years has been working with Viatech to design, deliver and evolve programming for our accelerator. One aspect of that is working with a wide range of networking groups everything from our own eye-popping signature events to peer roundtable sessions, as well as being active with a number of community organizations. Vitech's mission is cultivating the most cohesive tech community in the world and building that peer or collegial engagement is core to that mission. In-person face-to-face events have been eliminated over the last year, which has presented a significant challenge to networking and community building but the importance of these activities has not diminished. We are joined by three amazing and super engaged people in our community who are here to share their experiences and perspectives on community and networking. They are Humera Ahmed, founder and CEO of Locale, a facilitated mentorship and networking application. Christina Jones, VP Operations for RaceRocks 3D, a company developing tools and applications for e-learning, VR, AR, media, story, and game-based training, and Noah Warder, head of people at Gusto, empowering people operations and HR leaders to engage their teams in an authentic and meaningful way. Perhaps I could get each of you to provide a brief introduction of yourself to help set the context for this conversation. Humera, can you go first, please? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Humera Ahmed, founder and CEO of Locale. Um, I actually started a business based on this topic of networking because I moved, I, I mean, I'm, I was born and raised in Pakistan, moved to Toronto, lived there for five years, uh, lived in Vancouver for one year, and I've been living in Victoria now for nine years. So I call myself a global citizen. But one of the things as, you know, with whether it's life transitions or uh, moving to a new city, you know, networking is at the heart of feeling the sense of belonging. And uh, I'm really, really excited to be here and share what I've learned. And, um, and yeah, excited to be here. Thank you, Tamara. Christina, could you go next, please? Hi, I'm Christina. Um, networking is kind of responsible for my career in technology. I went to my mid thirties uh, with a career in the insurance industry um, and got curious about technology, walked through the doors of Biotech a few years ago and found a community that was just amazing. And I wanted to be part of it. So I met people, learned about opportunities, became part of giving back through um, different charitable organizations, found Race Rocks and like networking is why I'm here today. Awesome, thanks Christina. And Noah, can you please introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, so hi everyone, my name is Noah. Um, networking is also part of how I got into this job. I'm traditionally from uh, hospitality, uh, so running restaurants and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you learn, you meet a lot of people when you work in restaurants. And I got to meet a lot of great people who worked in the tech industry and sort of introduced me to the Victoria tech scene. Um, and then I founded my last startup based on community. And so that's, that's Battlesnake. It's community for developers to, you know, engage with each other all over the world, practice their programming skills and just have a lot of fun. And so, you know, community networking, it's a big part of how I got my career. It's how I think a lot of people, you know, expand their careers and meet those connections um, and make friends and, you know, start companies uh, through that networking and making those connections. So really excited to talk about, you know, how we can help everyone here learn about Victoria a bit more. Awesome, thanks Noah. Um, and yeah, one of the, the questions in, in the chat uh, reminds me that this is the session is being recorded and the recordings will be made available afterwards for additional reference. Um, we have a few questions prepared to help kickstart the conversation, uh, but we're also looking forward to any of the attendees um, asking their own questions. So I'll be, um, I'll be reading those as, as we go. Uh, in the meantime, I got a few here. So starting one is what's the best place to start for folks looking to start making connections in our community during the pandemic? And do you feel this is different now than pre-pandemic? Anyone want to go first? Sure, I'll jump on it. Um, I would say it's definitely different during the pandemic, at least for me. 
Um, we do have some very active Slack communities like the YYJ Tech community and the Tech Ladies community that also exists. Um, those online resources are there plus Biotech and Roundtables and events that are done through there that are all available during COVID. Prior to COVID, there was a lot of in-person opportunities to get together um, through meetup groups, through Viatech, through um, events that were happening. Um, yeah, the, the tech scene here in Victoria has a lot of opportunity for meeting people. And um, yeah, I look forward to the doors opening again. Thanks. Yeah. I'm going to add to that. So uh, definitely missing the in-person events because they were always so vibrant. A lot of them happened at Viatech. There's also Club Quench um, on is it Store Street. Um, you know, a lot was happening, but since the pandemic, a lot of things have shifted to online. But this is a great way. So, you know, I think even through Viatech, events like these are fantastic. Uh, like um, Christina said, there's a lot of YYJ Slack communities, and I believe maybe at some point we can even post the links here um, for people. Um, but also, um, I will say that LinkedIn has been incredible um, in times of COVID, and because of the the geographic, you know, you can pick and choose who lives in Victoria, who works in Victoria, and then being able to reach out to them has been has been incredible. And I would assume that it would really be you know, easier now because most people expect to get those calls uh, or at least invites uh, to be more mindful when you reach out, share you're new here or you're looking to connect with people uh, with common maybe jobs, leadership within that community and just start to um, expand. But I think LinkedIn right now has, has been for especially our team, really, really important. And I mean, there's locale. I wanna be mindful because it is really for women people who identify as women. It's a networking app for women to connect and we have over 2000 people. So that's also a great way, but for everybody else, I mean, you know, definitely try the meetup Slack via text. Yeah, yeah, we, there's a lot of still active meetups that are happening, especially on the dev side of things. And so if you're a developer, you're looking to move to Victoria, you wanna kind of hear more about what developers are doing here, go to meetup.com. There's a lot happening here. There's like mm. Side Project Sunday where people just kind of hang out and chat about what they're working on. There's a DevOps one. There's there's also the UX one that meets once a month. There's lots of meetups that are happening for, for lots of people. And, and then if you're in like the HR or people ops space, there's there's peopleops.ca. And so that's the community of Victoria and BC. Well, I'd say mainly Victoria, but Up Island and a few people from the other parts of BC that, you know, we connect, we chat, all things HR and people ops. And also you could probably reach out to anyone in that community and just ask them like, what's happening in Victoria. And like, you know, these are people who are hiring for companies. They have a pretty good pulse in the community and they're always willing to chat. And I know like I've been making lots of connections since the pandemic, just through and like, like you remember I said, LinkedIn, a lot of people reaching out on LinkedIn and be like, want to move to Victoria, want to move to the West coast. Just want to see what's happening out there. Do you have 20 minutes to, to chat on, on zoom? I think we, uh, there were so many events to participate in. I think we all took events for granted. Uh, pre-pandemic and so now there's lots of opportunities no I know you were involved with something called Battle Snake which is um, a multi-community event to, to um, you know there's an employment aspect to it but it, there's also a networking component to that and I think you know people taking advantage of, of every opportunity they have now to help uh, build their network and learn more about communities is super important. Yeah, yeah, Battlesnake was a big one, especially for the developers, but also there was Startup Slam. So that was the tech conference where, you know, we there was four tracks where people could learn from leaders within the Victoria and BC space on everything from design to product to software development for juniors and students to like more senior applications. And so I know they went virtual this year and it worked out pretty well and I'm sure it's gonna happen again. So, you know, there's lots happening here out on the island and it's, you know, sometimes we just don't make enough noise about it. Well, and I have gotten out for a, a couple of um, beverages and, and some meetings, and it's amazing. You still see people in the bars. Um, there, there is informal networking that is still taking place in a very safe way. You just have to be outside now. <laughs> exactly. And, and luckily, all, all the, the bars and restaurants have their, their amazing patio space, and we're now getting fantastic weather. So it's, it's all working in our favor. Okay, next question I've got here is what community groups do you recommend for folks with technical backgrounds who want to further develop their skills? 
Well, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about Battlesnake again. Like, it's all about programming. And there's, it, it is a global community now, but it was started in Victoria. So there's a very strong Battlesnake community here as well. Um, I know they're running their spring league right now. So, you know, go check it out and see what's happening there. But uh, that's a big one. And the meetup groups, there's lots of developer meetup groups in Victoria doing their thing. Um, and I think post pandemic, there'll probably be even more um, like in-person events and doing that kind of stuff. And so excited to see that happening. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else, dude. I'm going to pause and think for a moment and let maybe somebody else jump in. <laughs> Besides uh, specifically for programming, there's also like the biotech roundtables. If you're in leadership or marketing or product, there's um, ones available there as well, which are pretty awesome. Yeah, and we at Lookout also do events um, that are focused on building community. Again, mostly focused on topics tailored to women, but a lot of men also join our events. Um, so there's that. And then we don't provide like technical uh, development. We focus on leadership competencies. So if that's something that if you're, this, which is why this is so hard. If you're a person who identifies as a woman, you can check us out. We really focus on connecting you with leaders who can help you there. Um, other than that, I also um, will say that there's, you know, as you join the Slack groups um, or LinkedIn, being just mindful of um, what is it that you're looking for? Who are the top three people or the top persona of the people that you can possibly connect with? Is it a peer? I always recommend finding somebody with um, similar job or role as you that also really helps because then not only can that be somebody that you can talk to about your challenges or opportunities, but also hopefully become friends. And then the other one is reach out to a leader where that you aspire to be um, like or, or do admire, uh, reach out to them. Again, being mindful of the, the, the intention of that meeting, reach out, most people wanna give their time, but because we're in such a Zoom fatigue time, be intentional and say, if it's 20 minutes, make sure it's 20 minutes. If, and also if, if possible, send the agenda. Like I would love to talk a little bit about, you know, ask you, ask you questions, here's a bit about myself and then kind of see where to go. And always of course, follow up and thank people. But I really think that being intentional right now more than ever um, is key, regardless of the method or channel you choose. Thank you. Um, there's a interesting question that, that came in from Stephen on chat and I'd like to deal with it because I, I hear this one really frequently. And, and either you believe that, that, that Victoria, the region is a very clicky place or you believe it's the most open place you've ever seen. I, I hear I hear both. Mm. Um, and I often describe Victoria as a place where it's easy to get the first coffee with anyone. And whether you get a second coffee is, is up to you or not. Um, and that's certainly my experience. I'd be interested in, uh, in hearing your own experiences though, um, because I know you'll have, you'll have different experiences than myself. Yeah, my experience with that, um is I didn't find it clicky. Again, I entered the tech community as a mom in my mid thirties who had not had a background in tech um, and found people really interested and willing to talk to me. I joined some groups. I became part of going to lots of events that like were not set up or tailored for me. They were tailored for everybody, but nobody went like, that's an outsider, let's not talk to them. It was very, like, I felt very welcome. Like I went to a breakfast club where I sat with a bunch of like young developers and like learned about their path. And yeah, I have always found the tech community in Victoria very open and welcoming. Yeah, I'm um, just also adding to that. It's so actually, I believe it's a stereotype. I think it's a, it's a misconception because, um, uh, you know, I moved from, again, I've moved around so much, but have been here for a while. And one of the reasons is that people are welcoming. Um, you know, it, it, you may have to go into say five group, but you will find your tribe. You know, it's also making sure that, you know, whatever group that you go into, um, you're authentic with whatever the ask is. Learning about people. And I think it just goes everywhere. I will say though that here it's all about meaningful relationships. Whereas in Toronto, when I live there, it's like, okay, what do you not, what do you want? How can I help you? Here, people will help you for sure, 
but it's also there's more elements of that authenticity like do I want to help you I can I think it's just definitely I've noticed but very welcoming and before too I remember when I moved here I went to Viatex trade I even took a volunteer position because I wanted to just get involved that was a great way that led to a lot of actual good paid consulting work which was fantastic and then also um, through that you know meeting with other leaders and even having that ask if they see that authenticity and passion in you they will make referrals like oh you should talk to so and so I think they would be a great person for you to talk to I've definitely found that people have been really welcoming referred me to a lot of other people who added value to my network and it's just a come up with the come come from a space of I want to how can I give and you will get so much more in return because people really genuinely want to help yeah yeah, there's a lot of people who will help you if you reach out and ask for them, and, and and you tell them what what you're what you want, and you know do it in a very respectful manner, and you know offer to, I'd say you know back in the day you take them out for a cup of coffee or something like that, but now it's like can you give me 20 minutes on Zoom, and this is this is what I'm looking for, this is what I I, I want to achieve. Um, I will say like personally, like I do get a lot of people reaching out and being like, hey, like can I have a 30 minute conversation? And my first question is always like, what do you want to talk about? Like what is, what is the purpose of this conversation? Are you trying to solicit me for like trying to sell me something or are you looking for help? Um, so being like authentic, like Amira is saying, like be authentic, be upfront about what you're looking for. Um, and you're gonna have to put in some work, like full disclosure. I think that the, the clicky stereotype from Victoria comes from like, people have their friends and they have their friend groups and they have their groups of prof like professional networks. And to break into those, you are gonna have to put in a little bit of work. Um, and I will say like, like I'm, I'm originally from Saskatchewan, like I'm from the prairies and um, prairie folk are a little bit more open than they, I will say they're on the West Coast, just because, you know, when you live through a 50 below winter for eight months of the year, everyone takes care of each other, no matter what. Um, whereas the West Coast, you can, you can go out and do whatever you want all year round. Um, but you're going to have to put in a little bit of work. You're going to have to ask some people and you're going to have to, you know, put yourself out there a bit and, you know, take a few chances and you might get burnt and you might not get exactly what you want right away, but you got to be persistent about it. And that's, that's the key thing there is it's not going to be easy, but if you can make it, it's Victoria is one of the best places to live in the world. Really. It's lovely here. Yeah. And you know, I think part of, part of it is the, uh, the economic makeup. Of, of our tech industry. There's no really dominant subsector. And, and so consequently, there's not a lot of competition except for talent. Um, but you know, there, there's more than enough money to fund uh, companies and, and their ideas. And so I think people don't feel as competitive. There's not as many walls that, that get built. Um, but I think you're, you're all right. Um, you have to put some effort into it. You gotta know what you want. Like if you're gonna talk to someone like me, who can connect you to someone in industry, you got to help me. Uh, I'm just not going to volunteer to start connecting you. You got you to ask um, and, and you need to be specific and you can't be selling. I, I love the fact you, you brought that up, Noah, um, because you know a lot of people are trying to sell some, some product or service and we get a lot of that too. So, um, so yeah, that, that's fantastic. Um, as I, I'm sure all of you know, there's a big diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, initiative on right now with Viatech. It's been all that way for a while. It's just uh, people are now labeling it. Um, so I'd like to jump to this last prepared question that, that we had. Uh, what support is there available for folks from historically marginalized groups in the tech industry, like women, indigenous, people of color, people with disabilities, et cetera, within our community? I can't answer this this question without talking about what I do, unfortunately. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I'm leaving that one to you. I was like, <laughs> that's why we're all quiet. <laughs> because you know, I here's the thing. I think you know. I of course I focus on people who identify as women, uh, whether that's indigenous, whether that's other. You know, I'm from Pakistan. Um, you know, even our team is you know women from Brazil, China, like you know, so. Our goal is to create equitable workplaces for women. And we know that workplaces that work for women work for a lot of other groups as well. Um, and so there, there's that, there's locale. So because we're traditionally employer funded, so if you are, if you've moved here for a job, you can refer. 
uh, that would be great. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, I think it can be, you have to somewhat take it upon yourself. Um, reach out, like I said, reach out to people. Like I've gotten so many um, mentors through just cold calling these people with sharing, hey, I want to develop in this area. Just again, getting that coffee, but being mindful and say, I'm thinking about getting into this industry or I'm thinking about leveling up a little bit. Um, what do you recommend? Here's what I've done. Here's where I'm finding blockers. Show that you have made an effort already for yourself and then reach out to people. You know, it's, it's very trusted. It's kind of like, I don't know, like sales, but it's like you have to build that relationship first. And a lot of people will give you their time. They will mentor you, they'll sponsor you, they'll advise you. I remember even reaching out to this amazing woman, Alison Twiner, uh, two years ago, she was speaking at a panel, angel investor. Um, and she, she, when she was on a panel, they were describing her as she just you know, left Facebook. She's kind of semi-retired now. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the person I wanna talk to. I literally, right after the panel was over, um, I went on LinkedIn, reached out to her, said, hey, Alison, would love to connect with you. Here's what I'm doing. I would love to talk about X, Y, Z. She responded right away. She said, yep, let's book a time. We booked a time. I still remember I was sitting at Discovery Coffee, Blanchard, um, and it was, I called her up on the phone and I said, hey, will you be my advisor? And that was the first thing I said. Sounds so stupid in hindsight, but she's like, yeah, sure, let's talk about it. And I was like, what? I was looking around like, what? I was expecting a no. Um, but yeah, I would say just you have to make that effort. Um, and then probably biotech too. I, I believe you um, also share a lot of um, you know opportunities for skill development. So yeah, that's what I would have to say. When it comes to DEI, it's like, it's a, it's a work in progress. Everybody's trying to, to, to do better and which is, fantastic it's my everybody's becoming mindful of it and so mm -hmm. like change will is happening um i know victoria has had a lot of opportunities um and specialty groups that have have come into involvement in the last five years specifically or around inclusion of women to tech spaces um that's part of where i found my footing in the tech industry was coming through ladies and code and um groups like that iwist and and wonderful communities that exist like that to support women who are entering tech spaces. Um, there are lots of groups that are coming into fruition, but those, those support networks for marginalized communities are growing and I'm really excited to see where they come to in the future. Yeah, yeah there's, there's more and more happening and there's more and more work to be done. And um, there is definitely some areas in which, you know, there, I'm not aware of like, I'll be upfront and this might just be my own feeling. Like, I don't know of any great opportunities for indigenous peoples out in Victoria to get support and network and especially the tech community. And it's an area that we're seriously lacking and we need, you know, to start stepping up in and, and you know, it is known and it's being worked on and, and we're like full transparency is like part of who we are here in, in Victoria and tech. And so we're not trying to hide anything. We know where we're lacking, we're trying to get better. And there are resources out there, um, like the people ops community. Um, so that's the HR group community. Like we're doing a session with um, someone from the Neil Squire Society on just like how to make our overall recruitment practices more diverse. Like how, how are we becoming better as companies? And so there's, there's, there is things happening and we're getting better. Um, and I wish, I would say, I wish I could have come with you with a whole list of like, groups and be like, you can join this group, you can join this group, you can join this group. They just don't exist yet here in Victoria. There are some, um, and hopefully there will be more uh, as the years progress. And companies in Victoria are taking more serious action towards it. Like Race Rocks is an indigenous owned business. Um, and we're working towards getting our car certification to be a certified Aboriginal business. And it's learning about those communities and how, how we can help increase growth um, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done and it's a journey. That's uh, anybody saying they're nailing it right now is the one not nailing it right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we're nearing our time. And so what I'd like to do is ask each of you for your top one or two tricks, tips, techniques for uh, creating, building, expanding your network 
uh, in Victoria? Um, I guess I can go. Uh, I will say this, which is really hard, which was hard for me to do, um, was to create content and share other people's content that resonates with you. Um, and I know it, it may be uncomfortable, but even starting with the video, I remember my first, first video three years ago was from like this type of camera angle where like literally <laughs> the worst. If I find it, I'll post it. I, I know it's on YouTube somewhere. But you know what? I put myself out there and I talked about the why, you know, kind of uh, why I was doing what I was doing, put it there. And I remember on LinkedIn and I was so scared, but you have to just go for it. Uh, and you learn from it. And I remember my father-in-law, he called me and he's like, oh, I saw you posted this video on LinkedIn. Great content. But I think uh, I can help you with some tips on how to produce that content. And I was like, stop it. I just wanted to put content out there. And I kid you not, that video kind of started my kind of video speaking because I was like, okay, now I, I this is the bar set really low, right? I got so many comments because people were like, this is amazing. This is awesome. It's raw. It's authentic. And I was like, wow. So then I started to do more of those. And I remember at one point, our team member, um, he was like, Mara, I think it's about time we invested in the proper camera and mic setup. But anyway, what I want to share here is put yourself out there, create meaningful content. Uh, if, if, you, if you can't think of anything, share other people's content, because then you'll start to establish that authority, that credibility, that influence within the Victoria Tech community. Share Viatech's content, right? It's like then you'll say, oh, who is this person that shared it? So yeah, so the give the gift of sharing content and create content, and I think that would be my top tip. I love the fact you used the word authentic as well. Mm -hmm. People can help. I would say yeah. approach approach uh, networking and community with an attitude of curiosity and collaboration. Go into everything about what you can learn and what you can give back. Um, if you go with them with those attitudes, they're always well received and people want to help people who want to learn. Awesome. Noah, you get the last word. <laughs> I'll try and make it good. Um, so I would say like a, a big thing of that is just like, look for the people that are producing that great content, like like Mary said, and, and also follow them and reach out to them and ask them like, I, like, I love what you're doing. This content is amazing. I'd love to learn more about how you're doing this, why you're doing it. Um, and then just also just like, follow those people that you want to connect with and follow the companies you want to connect with and follow the community groups you want to connect with and start just brushing up on what's happening. Because if you're applying to a company in Victoria or you move to Victoria and start applying to Victoria companies, they're, they're invariably going to ask you like, what do you like about here? Why do you want to move here? What's, what's going on here? That's interesting to you. And you might want to be prepared to answer that question a little bit. Awesome. Can I just say one thing very quickly? All right. Reach out to the people at least 10 times before you give up. Like I cannot stress- I don't want to get 10 emails. <laughs> it might just be you. <laughs> it might just be you. But you know what, but that's the point that if you don't hear back from somebody, keep reaching out until you've hit your limit of, it, it might be five. My limit is 10, okay? I've got <laughs> lots of tolerance, but 10 times, right? And then you move on. Uh, but give it a try because people are busy, but they will, if you're persistent, they'll make time for you. Thank you, Christina, Noah, and Humera. I appreciate um, you taking time out of your busy schedules to, uh, to help us explore this, this topic. It's an important topic. And I hope our participants um, got value out of it. I think I did. And um, I think that is it. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you so much See for having me. See you soon in person, hopefully. Yes, soon. please. Yes, please. Someday <laughs> soon. Thank you all for participating. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh,